Hey everyone, uh, last time on the channel, Joshua shared with you about what he called the dreaded ripsaw. Uh, how this very coarse tool is really excellent at making long rips and boards. It's a very efficient way of cutting with the grain. So today I'm going to show you something that it is not at all good at. And in so doing, I'm going to segue into a tool that is actually really good for this task. So I'm going to use this 4 TPI rip saw to cross cut this board. Uh, so I'm going to get going here. Very coarse tool. Oh, hang on. Hang on just a second. Got to get the teeth established. Oh, it's dancing all over. Oh, hang on. I know I'll get going here in just a minute. There we go. Okay. Oh, wait. Oh, this is really hard on my arm. Oh. Okay. Hang on. Oh. I'm kind of demolishing the underside of my board here. Uh, that's not good. Um, it's not like this is a particularly dull saw. Uh, I'll show you real quick. I can still rip with it. Pretty quickly. So, uh, the problem is not with the saw's sharpness. The problem is what I'm trying to do with it. And let's go over to the bench and I'll show you what I'm talking about. <clears throat> so here's our little, our little demonstration board. So what Joshua was doing as he was ripping a piece of lumber is um, using basically a chisel to go with the grain. So on a rip saw with the teeth, they're all arranged so that each tooth is a little chisel pointing in exactly this direction. So if you were to sharpen this tool, the saw and file it, your file goes straight across because you're sharpening this point here, right? Picture it as a line of chisels. So as we rip, in essence, what we're doing is paring away, right? So if you picture a hundred teeth lined up doing this all at once, you're gonna make a nice, clean, and efficient cut. And wood grain works like this because the um, fibers aren't uh, so much attached to each other here, they just release as soon as you start to remove them this way. So, because wood grain is very weak in that direction, it wants to hold together long ways, which is our problem. So if I were to try and, let's say, cross cut with a chisel in that direction, I start to rip out everything because of the way the wood fibers want to hold on to each other along the length of the grain. So obviously this creates a pretty ugly bludgeoning of your board. So what is the solution to that? Well, the solution is to use a crosscut saw. Now, a crosscut saw doesn't use a line of chisels like this. What it uses, a better analogy, is it's a line of knives. So instead of having your cutting angle like this, it's got cutting angles like this. Half of the teeth are cutting this way and half are cutting this way. So what you're in essence doing is you're slicing rather than bludgeoning. So it's as if I want to establish, let's say I'm establishing a kerf here. I use my chisel to slice, right? Rather than going straight across. So if you imagine how much easier it is to take a knife across the grain rather than to uh, try and do that, right? Wow you can absolutely destroy your board. So the, the crosscut saw is sharpened with a file 
alternating back and forth. So instead of uh, how the rip saw is all just straight across, rip saws are extremely easy to sharpen if they're in good shape because every pass is exactly the same. But with a crosscut saw, you're alternating. So um, half the teeth are filed in this direction and half are filed in this direction. And that angle, let's say that angle of the, the knife edge is called the fleam of the saw. And there's a lot of debate about proper fleams for proper woods and things like that. I won't get into that here, but just to say, as soon as you go from that 90 degree down to something sharper or steeper, you, you're creating a crosscut saw. And a crosscut saw is much, much more efficient at cutting across the grain. Because again, instead of just bludgeoning through it with a straight edge and ripping apart the fibers, you're slicing the fibers. It's a long row of knives. So once you get started, Is so much smoother in the back side even though this is something of a coarser crosscut saw this is probably seven or eight tpi it's much cleaner and that was much less effort and that's just because this tool was designed with the wood fiber in mind right it uh the original inventor of the crosscut saw understood the way that wood works and so <clears throat> uh, knowing that the thing to do is to go with the slicing action across grain is a much more efficient way of cutting a board. So these two work in concert, uh, the crosscut saw and the rip saw. Uh, you, you need both, really. Uh, two different grain directions and two different tools. And uh, there's been this long, uh, long standing debate, right? It's as old as the hills. Is a 45 degree angle across your board is that a rip or a cross cut? And uh, I, I welcome uh, any input on that, but I'd suggest that you go out and you try it with both of your saws and see which is easier. I'm sure in different woods it'll be one, different woods it'll be another. But um, the, uh, the question of which saw do you use for a 45 degree cut is one that uh, no amount of debate will ever solve. So, um, I hold up this tool. I always think of the crosscut saw as kind of the, the obedient little brother who never gets any attention. Uh, it's so reliable. It's not glamorous. And uh, a lot of the other tools in the shop get more, more focus. But this is the tool that you always pull out and it always does exactly what you want it to do. So I'm extremely fond of the, uh, the crosscut handsaw. And uh, if you don't have one, you definitely need to get one. And don't just go and buy one of those, um, you know, cheap hardware store ones with the plastic handle. It's really good to go try and find, if you can't buy a new quality one, uh, buy an antique. These things are great. Uh, as long as your, your saw plate is not bent and your tooth line is pretty straight, uh, you can bring it back and use it. And these things work great. So, uh, yeah, cross-cut handsaw. It'll... Work way better than a rip saw for cross cutting, that's for sure.